The way my hatred for house sharing is just absolutely not normal. I avoid, I'm talking quietly, my housemates who are good people at like all costs because it's just, it's just not for me. I want to be on my own 90% of the time and then the other 10% with my boyfriend. Well, 5% with my boyfriend, 5% with my mum. I've outgrown it. I've been doing a share house since I was 19. I've been so lucky. I've like traveled the world. I've lived in Australia, done a ski season in Courchevel. I've lived in Vietnam teaching, right? I hated it all. <laughs> I'm moving in with my boyfriend. We're moving in together in April. And that's going to be the first time that I've ever lived with a guy. Can you believe it? I look forward to him immensely because I love him so much. I've done this since I was 19. Nearly 15 years. Ugh. Share house life is just not for me. It's for a certain kind of person. Communal living girlies. And I'm just not one of them. Sometimes it just hits you, doesn't it? Um, and you feel overcome by the fact that you'll be sharing until you die. And that you'll die in, in a sharing a room with someone and somebody who you don't really know and don't really like will just come across your corpse one day as your room starts smelling more than it usually should. And, and that's it. I actually want to cry. Because... <laughs> That's mine, but this, 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 this. This was the disgusting and gross moment a landlord discovered more than a hundred. When I tell you I am triggered, I used to live in a house share in Rains Park in South West London. And a guy that lived downstairs used to piss in his room. Uh, like when the nightmares, obviously I got him kicked out, but oh my God, people are scummy scummy oh i could have done without remembering that i had blocked it out nasty people this is what i don't like about living in a shared freaking accommodation fam imagine man needs to shit and i can't shit bro you know what i mean what kind of life is this bro i woke up this morning man needed to shit i'd use the bathroom man gets up someone's in the bathroom bro imagine it's six o'clock in the morning what the fuck are you doing up in the morning six o'clock in the morning man listen man had no toilet paper and no friggin wipes so man's gone to the shop to get toilet paper and wipes i come back in someone's gone back in the bathroom to take a fucking shower imagine the shit is running down like there's nothing i can do bro now man has to go to the gym to use the bathroom at the gym because if i don't do so and right now it's going to go a pear shape and explode if you're thinking about moving into a hmo because it's cheap i advise you not to bother it's midnight that's been playing for like three fucking hours <clears throat> some old geese i think he's fallen asleep in front of the telly i've written a note on his door about two hours ago i've been like can you turn the telly down please he didn't now i live above it below it sorry right above me I need to move. I look every day to move. Because it's really cheap here. But even today I got like woken up. Because I'm, I'm right next to the front door. So it just slams all the time. Everyone comes in and out. Don't live in a HMO. The women usually find it's the men that are dicks. I think I could talk about it now. But this is a breeze compared to the guy before. The guy before was a fucking creep. He sent me inappropriate messages. Has to get the police involved, sent me porn, transphobic messages, transphobic porn on the day of moving in. Uh, yeah, it was horrendous. I won't talk about landlords and all that because he's my current landlord. Um, but yeah, in the end he started stealing my pants from the... We got communal washing machine and he stole my pants from there. I just wish people were quiet. I never realised how much I valued quiet until you live in a HMO. There is no feeling worse than coming back to uni from home and seeing the state your housemates left your kitchen. I know you can't smell that, but it's just like odour oh, in here. Like, God knows how long this plate has been there. Blech. Lovely pile of shit. That is my towel.
I did not leave my towel there. I'm throwing it in the bin. I can finally speak about this now because I am now moved out and my life is no longer in danger. <laughs> But this is a story time on my crazy housemate. So I moved to this house peak lockdown and my housemate seemed all right. And one day he just started showing me messages on his phone from somebody who was sending threatening messages saying they're gonna come around the house and beat him up. Like bearing in mind, I don't even know this person and they're showing me these messages. And then it gets even worse and I get a message on Instagram from somebody saying, your housemate is gonna ruin your life, watch out. And thinking back to it, why? Did I even carry on living there when I got a message like that? Like, major red flag. So anyway, we would occasionally have drinks together and I started noticing that he, he liked a drink. Like, he would order like six bottles to the house, stash them all in his fridge in his room. And when they got drunk, they would start like picking fights with me for absolutely no reason. Like, honestly, out of thin air. I'm just very much like, try to keep the peace, like, he was having a go at me and I would just like calming down and be like, look, there's no need to get angry. And then he'd apologize in the morning. That was a recurring thing. And then there was this one time my friend came around, my best friend, and we were out in the garden having a little beer and the housemate comes out and says to my friend, oh, I get the vibe that you don't really like me, do you? My friend's response was, I don't really feel any kind of way about you. I don't like you. I don't dislike you. Let me tell you what happened after it kicked off. So me and my friend went back to my room. The housemate comes and knocks on my door with a baseball bat. He's literally banging down the door with the baseball bat. I go to open the door. He's swinging this baseball bat literally at me like this. I'm like pushing him out of the freaking door. He's like, get your fat ass friend out of my house. No. Can we all talk about how horrible, like so fucking horrible it is sharing an apartment with people? I mean, I beg you with everything in me. Do not, I repeat, do not share flats with anybody. Not for any reason. If you have the money and you find a conducive place that you can stay on your own by yourself without having to share any communal area with anybody, do it. Because I've been going through hell. Like, literally hell. <laughs> God. Tell me something your housemate did that to this day still makes you gip. I'll go first. My old housemate used to pour the water from her hot water bottle back into the kettle for us to drink out of because it saved water. So my housemates blocked me on Instagram besties. All because I wouldn't give her money to fund her over the Christmas period. Why the fuck is it my responsibility to pay for your loo roll when you're living in the flat by yourself? What the fuck is wrong with people? And she's got the most money out of us all. This is the same flatmate with the fuck off loud printer. I might throw that piece of garbage out the window. It's not on. Is it normal to walk into your roommate's room, like, without permission? Bearing in mind we're not friends. And this is like a shared account. I don't think it's normal. I, I told one of my friends, actually I told a couple of my friends, some people agreed with me and some people were just like, oh, like, that's how people like be friendly and that's how like people enter the rooms and they jive i said don't jive unannounced what i said who is at the door and you opened and entered that's rude that's inconsiderate i don't know you we're not friends and you were dirty on top of that this is the sanctity of my room and i don't know like my room wasn't locked that day and i was practically like not naked but like i just come from the gym so i'd like taken everything off and i was gonna go shower she, she knocked at my door and i said who is it and she just opened the door and entered my room and she's done it twice. And I literally called her out on that and I was like, why are you in my room? And then she tried to now say, oh, you're making noise. Can you take it? Can you put it down or can you turn it down? But I wasn't even making noise. I just think she's a weirdo. And I just think she wants to see my room. Because everyone else has just good vibes. She just comes with bad energy. And I just can't deal with it. Not in my own private space. In my room. The sanctity of my room. Where I go to be me. You entered my room. My room. My room. So I'm looking at going back into a house share and because i'm 40 m most of well not most but a lot of my mates have kind of sorted you know they're in relationships obviously being in a relationship really helps in terms yeah. of you're halving 
the rent or you're halving the mortgage. I'm already there. Take a look around. I used to live in a house share. Me and my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, who rented the loft. We had a set rate for it and we were told that the landlord would rarely be there and that no one else would be moving in. It turns out the landlord was quite greedy and decided to move people into every single room of the house. So it became quite crowded to the point where I'd be in the bath in the middle of the day and he'd, he'd be like showing people around, like trying to get into the bathroom to show them it. It's like, Jesus Christ, man, how many people do you want to live here? Also, the landlord said he would never be there, but he was there all the time. He also would regularly bring back a girlfriend who would get hysterical, and there were parts of the house that were just smashed, like the oven door was smashed. I assume she'd kicked it in for some reason, and she was always there. And it was only a small, like, terraced house, 